For those of you who have not been properly introduced to the Mica Mini Boombox, here it is. Now, this is a very small-ish device. We're looking at 16 inches wide, this is a 15 inch ruler, and 7 inches deep including the grills, and about 10 inches high. And it's a boombox, and the reason I made this is because I'm tired of not having music. And I'm not talking about headphones. People walk around with the headphones all the time, and they're very private, and they sit their own little world, and they read their books, and they check their smartphones. And I don't do that. I want the musics. And I want everyone to know that I want the musics. So, instead of going out and buying a $100 Sony boombox, like I know people have done, I set a course for building something different and better, because that's how I do business. If it isn't different and it isn't better, then I didn't do it. So, in a feat of not engineering genius, because that's an insult to engineers, uh, I managed to put together this, which is really, really simple. And because it's really simple, I think I could produce it. Because I can produce it, I could sell it to you. Now, I'm giving one away on my subreddit, not out of micas, I'm using the B652s, because frankly I haven't used them in a long time, and they were cheaper. When I got these, uh, they dropped under 40 bucks. I'm like, alright, I'll just build the cheapest one possible. And unfortunately, leave that over here playing for a second. Unfortunately, they've gone back up to 50 bucks on uh, Amazon, but they're probably still cheaper on Parts Express if you buy over $100 and they give you free shipping. So here there are the Dayton Daytons which are bigger. We're just going to go right off the bat and say, yeah, bigger. Gently, gently. Gotta have these on there tight. All right. Yeah, bigger. Four inch driver, six and a half inch driver. These still put out more bass than this does, but as far as potential volume goes, Six and a half inches where it's at. So, the pair I'm giving away is going to be made out of these Daytons. These particular Daytons. These brand new purchased Daytons. And future boomboxes can be made out of either or. The price difference is almost irrelevant once these go back up in price. So you got $80 a pair for X's. These are the MB42's with the texture with crossovers added. And this is just the standard Dayton. And I may, if you buy a boombox from me and you want the speakers with it, because now the option is I could literally just build the frame if I uh, detach the speakers here. Which this is the real key, the fact that it does this. Right? Anyone can glue speakers to a box and say, oh, my boom box is done. Now the fact that you could actually set it up and play it like that makes this unique and special. So if I'm selling you just literally from these wires in, because I'd include the wires, these things are uh, not cheap actually, they're like eight dollars a piece. If I include just I'll plug that this bit, then I could be then I could do good. Because then you just buy the speakers, I'll have all sorts of templates for you. You'll apply some glue, some uh, some uh, velcro strips and some felt pads, and you'll be in business. And I'll be in business and everyone will be in business. And I don't have to work in a cubicle the rest of my life. Like I ever did that anyway. Alright, so, this is my Micah Boombox. You now have been introduced. You know its powers. I'm going to put it away. Uh, because I have all the parts. Well, nearly all the parts. I ordered some more today. For, there you go. Down, down, down. For the next revision, the Rev 2 of the boombox. Here are all the parts. A 15 by 20 inch piece of cutting board, courtesy of Sam's Club. And I can't find them online any cheaper. I get these for about $10. Uh, these Best Tech laptop power adapters. Uh, I got the three prong, it doesn't matter. And they just, there you go. That's, that's, that's the Best Tech. And they run 20 gauge wire, which isn't the greatest, but we're going about three feet with this, so that's fine. So these are $8 a piece. 
I bought this, which is really, really crappy. Like, this is spaghetti thin, and I may return it to Amazon. It's... That was like $3, and that's how much a good one should cost. Uh, here is the uh, 3M Dual Lock, which holds everything on to that boombox. It comes in a one-inch strip like this, and it comes with 10 feet of this. But, there's only one side. See, that's how it sticks. So that means this is five feet long, because you got to use both halves, or it's useless. So this is $17 for five feet. That's why it's expensive, because it's the best. Uh, banana plugs, I got the dual banana plugs. These uh, Aurorium, Araxium. Arrrrrrrm. A, that's terrible script. Whatever. I've used them before. They're decent quality, and since they're getting mounted, it doesn't really... 100% matter. So there, those the, those are there, there. Uh, felt feet. Now these are actually a structural, critical structural component. So getting the good ones of these is actually very expensive. Uh, about $26 for a bag of 160. I'll link that. Here is the amplifier that I plan to use. I don't plan to use the Indeed like I did on that because it had massive caps and when you plugged in the 12 volt, every battery pack I tried this one at a $50 one that was 5,000 amp hour or 10,000. It had a big $70 one. None of them worked because you turn it on and it would try to charge the caps in that and it would just go, no, overload and freak out. So this is based on the same circuitry design that the Leapi amp is. And I bought the Leapi amp just in case I could get it in here. But I knew, I knew when I was looking at this, like, I want to build the cheapest boombox I can. I knew this wasn't going to work, because this is too friggin' big. And it, it's not that it's too big, but it's nearly the same size as the uh, SMSL. But the controls and everything are on the wrong sides. Where this will fit in a 4-inch wide center stock, this is 5.5 inches wide. I've measured it, if I had a thing. So, that's, that's too big. That's too big a, a gap, and it's frankly ungainly with the, with the giant. I'd have to cut these metal wings off and mount it a different way. And it's just, you know, I, don't, I only recommend this because it's the cheapest amplifier. If you can afford better, buy better. Now, that's where this comes in, the SMSL. I'm not sure what that stands for, and I, I've sort of made up my own little what that means. <laughs> it's kind of dirty, I'm not going to say it. But uh, it, it's got better connectors, it doesn't use the springs, it's got actual five-way bindings. Uh, it doesn't have an auxiliary but 12 volt in, no gain, no uh, tone controls. This thing works just fine. And it's small, and it's light, and look what it comes with. It comes with an actual power brick, a 3.8 amp. Now that one, that Leapi actually came with a three, which kind of blew my mind, because I knew they used to come with twos. So I guess they've upped it yet again. Uh, so here's a 3.8, and you're gonna be able to use this on said boombox, because I'm, I'm in my brain, parts haven't arrived, but I'm my brain, you're going to be able to plug this in, use it, and charge the battery, if everything works. Again, in my brain, where things don't always make sense. And here is the star of tonight's program. This is the important bit. You'll recognize this from my uh, Dreadlight build. And this is just a 12-volt, 3-cell. The cells are small. They're, like, down here. I have one ripped apart over here somewhere. And it's just, just a 12-volt battery pack. And it's cheap. It's, like, $23. And what this it comes with a transformer which is somewhere, and you plug it into the wall, you plug it in here, you turn it on, the light on the transformer turns orange when it's charging, green when it's done, you shut this off, plug this into whatever you want to power, and it powers it. And when I tried to power my Indeed amp with this, it didn't make go. It would freak out, and I'd have to turn it on and off and on and off ten times. But with this amplifier, turn that on, turn this on, it's on, here I'll pull off the thing, which, by the way, this doesn't have a power indicator, so I had to get uh, brave with the cutoff wheel because this is a, a standard, you know, dial with a little notched indicator to say where it is, and it's just a notch in the aluminum. So what the hell is the point of having blue LEDs behind something that doesn't light up? So I cut through the aluminum down to the plastic. So now that lights up, and I could do that on all of them because I think that's important. It's important you know if your amplifier is on. And there you go, it's running right now. I've been literally playing this setup in this room for five days, maybe an hour or two a day, and it hasn't died yet.
It just hasn't died. So when it does die, I'll be able to take a... I'll recharge it, do a full, straight through, all day playing music and give you a full account of how long that battery is intended to last. Now, some of the things I did also modify is I removed the rubber feet from this because when it mounts, I have plans for the front for a shield and it can't be there. And on the Dayton here, they come now with little rubber feet, little foam feet, and they're super annoying to take off, but I removed them because I have to put down four of these felt pads so they can notch into the board. So, what we have going on here, and actually I can just plug this in real quick. What we have going on here is the beginnings of a boombox manufacturing, I would say company, but since I'm alone, I don't think that matters. Well, let's get some source. Got to get me some of that source. This is coming straight off my XDA2 uh, DAC. So what do we need? We need power. Turn the volume down. We need amplification. Clicks on. And you know what? Listening to just a set of Dayton's, and I haven't done that in so long. Listening to just a set of Dayton's for the last five days. I remember why I love them. They don't have any bass response, even close to what the micas can do. Even with the bigger drivers. But they are so focused. I mean, they're just, they're full range. They're full range drivers. So everything that's going from the source into this amp hits that driver. Without any electrical interference of a cap or inductor or anything. And I just like that system. That's why I am always wanted a set of zoos, even though Strategic says they're poopy. He says my zoos are poopy. And as far as volume goes, where are we set on this? Yeah, if I lower this, there is distortion at the highest end of this amp. And the way to fix that is to limit your source. So if I limit my source to negative 16 dB, which if you had a portable player plugged into this, you would turn this up all the way. All the way 100% up. That's crackling the songs from 1940. You turn this all the way up and start raising your phone, player, iPad, laptop, up and up and up until you hear distortion, back it down, and then you have full control with this volume knob. Uh, also, there's this, which I'm going to need for running all the wires. This will get cut up into little bits. Terminal block. And, uh, there. Now, I'm not going to count this as part one of the instructional video on how to build what I'm building. Because, well, I didn't actually do anything. Just explained what I have. So that's next. Next week on. Next week on. Mad Science Hour. We'll be getting this thing really set up. I'm going to start to lay out the board, get everything ready to cut. And I'll lay out all the tools you need. If you're going to want to build one of these from scratch, if you don't want to buy the kit from me, you don't want to buy the boombox totally built for me, I will give you instructions you build it yourself. I will be fine with that. I'm playing them upside down, and I may not... I could uh, have them mount upside down, but I may not, because I'm, I'm a nice guy, and it would revolve if people bought the flat pack to rip these off so cleanly that I could do that. Whatever, whatever. This Lee Pie, I'm just going to keep around because it was $22, and in case I, in an emergency, need an amplifier, here it is. All right, next time. Next time we'll go into detail. All right, since we're here, let's pretend that I just got all this stuff, and I want to now build it. And you got all this stuff in the description, and you want to now build it. So you're going to take everything out of the box, and the first thing you're going to do is peel off these little feeties on the bottom of the Dayton's. Now... You just just do it by by thumbnail if you have thumbnails. Mine are sort of short, and you're gonna see it's gonna leave that disc of terrible. And well, we're gonna get rid of that with some chemicals that are known in the state of California to cause cancer, because those are the best chemicals. I want birth defects and cancer, but only in California. Here is that stuff. This is called Gugon, and I'm pretty sure you can buy it online. I haven't uh, looked. I've had this bot. I bought a big bottle way back, like four years ago, and I just put it in this little sprayer, and I deliver cancer to things. I'm just leaving drops of it there. 
don't want to overdo this stuff. A, it's expensive, and B, it's semi-caustic and flammable. And you're just going to let it sit on those terribly ugly discs. And uh, in about a minute and a half... I'm going to move this over while we're doing other things. About a minute and a half, you're just going to take... I don't recommend a paper towel. You need like a rag, something rough, construction paper. And you're just going to start rubbing at that, and it should peel off. And then you have the fun task of using alcohol to try to clean the residue from the goo got off. So, yeah, this is what that's going to look like when it's done. There was feet on this yesterday, and I removed them. Now, that's it for the speakers' modification until we go to stick things onto them, which can't be done until more of this build gets underway. So let's move this over, and I really shouldn't be playing music on them while I'm modifying them. Whoop. Hang the cost of chemicals away. So, disco. These are the source wires, ignore those. This battery pack comes with this cable. It's a it's just simply a 12 volt to 12 volt plug. That's that's it. And in our build, we're gonna use this, we're gonna cut it shorter at some point and reattach it through the center pillar. Uh, I removed the little feet from this, same method as that. They peel off, they leave a little residue, you put a little bit of that caustic uh, goo gun on, you wait, you rub it, and it came off most of the way. You can see there's a little bit, because I put it on the grooves here, which is sort of shitty of them, but that's fine. And the real, real important thing, the real star, is of course my favorite building material cutting board. High molecular weight polyethylene. I love you, cutting board. Now, the reason I use this is it's waterproof. It's relatively cheap. It's easy to find. You're supposed to hit it with the knives all day, so it's resilient as hell. And it cuts better than wood ever would. So it's easy to work with. All, all those things. There's no reason not to use cutting board on something. Now the only thing I'm going to concern myself with is it's got a couple logos here, and when I do these, they're on the opposite sides, of course they are. So I'm just going to be conscious of that as I'm measuring things out. Uh, tape measure. You're all going to hopefully be using this amp, because it's really the only amp I can recommend to use. Everything else is more than 12 volt. The whole point of this is 12 volt, cheap 12 volt battery, 12 volt amp, everything works, no problem. On my Mica boombox here, uh, more expensive amplifier, because it's a little thinner, more powerful amplifier, and the little battery pack didn't work. So I need this goddamn giant monstrosity that costs $90 with all the accessories. So we're avoiding that. We're avoiding that real easy. We're going with a less expensive, less powerful amplifier that can just run off that battery pack. And it is, at its widest, 3 and 5 eighths. Now... If I want to get super anal, this is under three, this is two and seven eighths. If I want to get super anal, we could cut this to that width, to it, just straight up. But that's not my style. We're going to go with a four inch, it's four inch too wide here. Four inch leaves less than a quarter inch on either side. So I think we're going to go with a four inch column. That'll leave plenty of room for those two bits and these get tucked underneath and this doesn't get mounted unless you want to carry it around this is the uh, wall adapter from what I've been able to tell with our my testing so far that's gonna last at least six plus hours possibly up into 12 hours I haven't really just sat and listened to it for 12 hours straight so I apologize for that um, magic marker we'll go over how I lay these this stuff out I really need a longer ruler now. Hmm. All right. So let's say we're going four inches. Obviously, the speakers. Can I get a piece of paper towel? I don't have. Oh, that's awesome. That's a piece of window screen. Let's give this a wipe first. Try to get the excess off. Now I'm going to use a piece of window screen and really. Oh yeah. Aggressively. 
we're not sanding it off. We're definitely getting that residue get off there. You don't really want to rub paper towels on it because it will leave more on the sticky bits. Look at that. It comes right off. God bless junk in this room. Two. Yeah. Oh, shredding paper towels. Maybe I'll edit this bit out. Maybe I won't. This is live. This is real. All right, done. It's very special, that piece. So now that's free of residue, free of sticky stuff, but in no way alcohol it is. Well, that was a lot. That was a lot of alcohol. My bad. I got to get the goo gone residue off now because nothing will stick to it. And eventually something's got to stick to this end of it. So just keep giving this a rub every now and then with a uh, rubbing alcohol. Get it? Give it a rub with rubbing alcohol. And we'll get this nice and cleaned off. You can do the same to the quality control sticker if you really feel like it. But now that it's ready to go, we could use it in our measurements. Nah, huh, huh, huh. It's only cancerous in California. I don't live there. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, it came off real good. So just stack these right next to each other until they touch. Let's see how much room we have left in this cutting board. Five and three quarter inches. So we will get we obviously can't put it this way. We could if there was no amplifier involved. But since there's an amplifier involved, we've got to go this way. You can go to the edge. You can leave a little bit of a bumper if you want. I might leave a little bit of a bumper. So if you're carrying this around, you bang into something, you don't bang the box. I'm also going to leave the grill coming off a little bit. Now, the finished edges, the edges that come from the factory on this, you can leave two of them. So you can leave that side edge, and I probably want to leave the front edge. Of course, once we cut this, it's going to have very sharp edges, and you are going to have to uh, sand or slice down the edges to make them all match, which I can do. Just get a, get a sanding block, some sandpaper, and just sit there for 10 minutes, rubbing it all out. <laughs> rubbing it out. There's that. There's... I need something four inches wide. Does I have something four inches wide? It would be real helpful if I didn't have to just measure. God bless America. Four inches wide. I'm gonna put this right there. I'm recessing the gr the grills, so this bumper will be around the entire length. And now I'm going to. Now, when I do markers for cutting, and I'm going to cut this on a chop saw on a pull push pull uh chop saw 12 inch big bastard i want to cut through the line i want the line to disappear i don't want to cut on the inside of the line or cut on the outside of the line you can't do a very thin line on this because it's plastic so what i'm about to draw the saw blade is going to come down on and cut and i should just mark really but i gotta keep enough for the bumper there we go Ignore that little front bit. All right. Now let's turn it, even though I've got this blue rubber down and I really can't rotate a goddamn thing. We could probably go right to the edge in the back. Right. And now we'll continue those lines. And just for fun, we're going to mark where the middle is. Just for fun. For funsies. By the way, always have music playing while you're working. You'll work, work much more efficiently. So here's our cut lines. Bumper in the front, flush in the back. Bumper on the side, bumper on the side. What are we looking at here? If that disappears, we're left with a six and three quarter depth 
and needing a tape measure for the whip. I love this husky tape measure. Look at that. Look at that. You can measure things above you. This is the, this is the most fa fastest purchase I've ever made. I was like, oh, it's a husky tape measure. Oh my god! And I just bought it. Plus it's got very, very, very strong magnets on the front of it. I can pick up things that are magnetic. Nothing on my desk is magnetic. Great if you lose something in like the walls. <sighs> Best fucking tool ever! Where was I? Distracted. Uh, cutting through that line, we're left with 18 and 5 sixteenths. So 18 and 5 sixteenths. Six and seven eighths. That's irrelevant. Unless you're, when you're building this, you're just going to do exactly what I did. You're going to measure everything. Gap is four. Even though you know we can go less than that. You also want to keep in mind the handle, the actual part where your hand is going to go through, has to live here. How wide did I make this? Is this narrower or wider than four? It's been so long. Four and a quarter. Hmm. You want to go a little bit wider? See, these are smaller speakers, though. So you can give it a little bit wider berth without really affecting it. These are already massive speakers. Right here, look at the width difference on the piece we're cutting. It's nearly two and a half inches wider than my Mica Boom box for this Dayton one. Although, you know what? The Daytons are probably lighter. You're watching my process at work. Four and a quarter, four and a quarter, four and a quarter. Will that be too narrow if it's only four? I mean, what am I gaining? I'm not going to be able to save more of the board. Alright. We're going to give it a little bit of a berth. Touch, 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 all I need is touch. Now, also, alcohol, rubbing alcohol will remove these marks from the cutting board, which is better than it can do on wood. So I'm just going to be able to spritz this down. I have a spray bottle of alcohol around here somewhere. When I find that, I'm going to go, and just wipe this down, and it's going to turn gray, and then it's going to disappear. Uh, now... So here's the base, and that's fucking long. That's skinny, though. So, now I'm going to need the four and a quarter inch. We're switching to four and a quarter inch other piece, and I'm probably going to wait till I cut this, and then I'm going to just place it here, because I'm not sure what the curve of the blade's going to do. I want to make sure this is a nice straight cut. I'll bring this piece back in here and cut that, and we'll be on our way. Well, the saw is out of the question because... It's off kilter by about a degree, and I have to go get a 35 star head to fix it. So I'm not cutting this first. Instead, I'm doing some busy work. I'm getting all the dual lock cut in half, because it comes in the one-inch roll, and a piece that wide is A, harder to put on, and B, wasteful as hell, considering how expensive this stuff is. And for the first time, I'm realizing how much is actually involved in this build. My roll seems much smaller now. And I got one last piece to cut, so I'll show you the entire process of uh, measuring and cutting. How that goes down. Town. Bing. Stick the two halves together, you can size them up. Push the ends. Alright, so here's a full one inch piece. And I'm not sure if this is going to hold true for every single roll of this stuff. But when you look down the one inch ruler the half inch mark perfectly lines up with that line of text like for the whole roll so right where it says 3m dual lock on that line right there Fer the molecule of that letter ends is the halfway point so what i've been doing is holding down my tape measure taking a razor blade just scoring it Trying to score it against the razor, the, the 
the ruler. That would be nice. And once you've scored it, you've cut the paper. You can just bend it a little bit. Make sure you've cut the paper. Take a pair of scissors, a sharp pair of scissors. I'm using a shorty, and it's all getting gunked up because I'm cutting through adhesive. And actually, it's real easy to follow that line right there. I would love to find this stuff in half inch, but I have not seen this particular stuff, this color, and this... There, there's some of this stuff that's thicker. It's like eighth inch high, and I'd rather not use it. This, this stuff is a little bit more discreet when you don't have it attached. All right. So now I have... Let's see how many inches total this would come out to be. Come on. Now I've got some optional stuff going on in this build. Uh, I want a full front shield over the amp. I'm thinking about putting one on the back too. So one of these is for that. These two will go to the battery. These two go to the front shield again. Now this is just one length because it's folded over. So, oh god, the big ones. Well, I don't, I'm going to run out of ruler. So, 14 and a half. And I cut these four. So I add another eight. 14 and a half plus eight. 22 and a half. 22 and a half inches of this stuff. There you go. This is what's going to be holding together the prototype boombox. 22 and a half inches of this stuff. And at $16 per five foot, that's two feet. That's expensive. But until I find a, a better source for this or a better solution than this, this is it. I'm going to have to buy a bulk lot of this stuff. Bulk. Bulk lot. Uh, I could probably, I could apply it to this to these things that are getting bolted on and then just leave the other half and peel it off and stick it on already. But for now, I'm just going to leave it in a little bag or a little pile and we'll work on that later.